If everyone could please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you so much. And I will now um, start this agenda for the regular board meeting of the commissioners of the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority this Thursday, September 15th at noon. And I will start with our Madam Secretary taking the roll. Chairperson Olivia Diaz. Present. Vice Chairperson William McCurdy. Present. Commissioner Scott Black. Here. Commissioner Valerie Craig. Here. Commissioner Sharon Davis. She was on the phone. She was. Commissioner Sharon Davis. Here. Yeah. Okay. Commissioner Michael Disman. Here. Commissioner Tick Siegerblum. Here. Commissioner Dan Shaw. Here. And Commissioner Luciana T Turner. Here. A quorum is present, and we are in compliance with the Nevada Open Meeting Law. All right, thank you very much. And I'm just going to remind my colleagues here, let's use the microphone when we have questions or comments so that those joining us virtually can hear. I've been on the other end, and if you don't use your microphone, you can't hear what you're saying. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and move on to um, the second agenda item, public comment. Public comment during this portion of the agenda must be limited to matters on this agenda for discussion and possible action. If you wish to be heard, come to the speaker's podium, clearly state your name and address, and please spell your last name for the record. The amount of time any single speaker is allowed will be limited to three minutes. Is there anyone wanting to offer public comment at this time? Seeing no mad dash to the microphone, I will close this public comment period and move on to the approval of minutes, agenda item three. Uh, so I will, if there are any comments, edits, or any discussion on the minutes, I'll entertain those at this time. If not, um, I'm open to accept move, any Move motion. to approve the minutes. I have a first by Commissioner Sagerbloom. Second. And a second to approve the regular meeting minutes of, on August 25th, 2022. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. We'll move on to agenda item four, approval of the agenda with the inclusion of any emergency items and deletion of any items. And so Mr. Jordan, are we looking to do any There changes? are no, no changes, okay. Madam Chair. No, no changes uh, needed, so I will entertain a motion. Move to approve the agenda. Okay, I have a first from Commissioner Sagerbloom and a second from Vice Chair McCurdy. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries unanimously, thank you. Uh, we'll move on to our consent agenda items. We only have one, number five. Um, so I don't know if the board has any comments or questions or wants to pull this agenda item, but if not, I'll entertain a motion to approve consent agenda item number five. So I have a first by Commissioner Shaw and a second by Vice Chair McCurdy. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. aye. Any aye. opposed? Motion carries. All right, that concludes our consent agenda items, and we'll move on now to uh, agenda item six, the acknowledgement of our departed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, we have a, a few people who we've lost since our last meeting. Um, James Hyder, Edward uh, Rachelis, Stephen Leonard, Julie Johnson, Holly Bordos, and I'm sure that you heard in the news that on uh, Tuesday night, uh, Michaela Adams, a tenant at Marble Manor, um, was fatally killed. And uh, so we just wanted to keep them all in our prayers. Last night, staff and I attended a virtual for Miss Adams. And on Saturday morning, there's another uh, community uh, visual that you're all welcome to. We'll make sure you get information, but know that staff and I will be in attendance. Uh, you know, a very unfortunate, very senseless act, but uh, we were there last night. Um, yesterday we were there with the family. Uh, we've, in addition to just being present, 
uh, we're working to uh, offer crisis management services and just just be a part of the community right now but our our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, to her family indeed and we'll um, take a moment of silence to honor those who have departed Thank you for sharing, Mr. Jordan. We're going to move on to agenda. These, uh, the next part of our agenda are all items to be taken separately. Uh, they're all up for discussion and possible action. So we're on agenda item seven. Uh, it's procurement. And who is here to present on the conditional board approval to enter into a new intergovernmental agreement with the Clark County Automotive Division to provide SNARA fleet vehicle maintenance and fuel services? Johnny Shaw. And Johnny, would you give a brief history of how we got into the relationship with the county? Uh, we've been in relationship with the county for uh, some years now, uh, not just with the county, but also with the city of Las Vegas. And uh, typically, there's two agreements. Uh, one is a co-op agreement or inter, uh, interlocal agreement that all municipalities uh, need to uh, sign in order to do business with one another. And then there's an intergovernmental agreement, uh, which we have here uh, today. And we're waiting on uh, legal counsel and I are waiting on uh, review and approval from HUD if we need to execute the interlocal agreement. Um, which is not here today. It's not a dollar amount tied to it. It's just an agreement between the municipalities. And so that's what we're bringing to, for, forth today to the board uh, to approve. And they handle all of our fleet. Uh, the county handles all the fleet, half of the fleet, and the city of Las Vegas handles the other uh, half of the fleet for maintenance, repairs, and fuel. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Shaw, for those opening um, that opening and for background information on agenda item seven. Are there any questions the board has at this moment? Move approval. Well, let's, before we jump to that, I just want to make sure we're sensitive. So is there anyone online that has a question or a comment? This is Commissioner Turner. Yes, speak a little bit louder, Commissioner Turner, because we you're barely audible. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so I, I did have a question. When you mentioned the intergovernmental agreement, um, that's between the county, correct? The county all together. Yeah, I didn't understand her question. Her question was um, when you're mentioning this intergovernmental agreement, it's with the county. She's wanting to just get that yes. information. Yes, yes, it is. Okay, and this is for the. Seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars, correct? That's over. That's over a period of five years. Period of five years, and this is with the county. I just wanted to make sure because I saw another one that was the same kind of number. I just wanted to make sure this was county. That is correct. So, Commissioner Turner, just like Mr. Shaw articulated, uh, we do half of the servicing of half of our fleet with the county, and then we do the other half with the city of Las Vegas. So it's the next item. So this one is, this agenda item we're talking and about to move is uh, the agreement we have for maintenance on half of our fleet with Clark County. Okay, I was just wondering, okay, thank you. Yes. So if there is no further discussion or questions on this agenda item, I'll take Vice Chair McCurdy's first to move on agenda item number seven and seconded by Commissioner Disman. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to agenda item eight, conditional board approval to enter into a new intergovernmental agreement with the city of Las Vegas to provide vehicle maintenance and fuel services. And we just heard uh, the explanation pretty much about this agenda item, but I'll um, open it up for any other questions or comments the board may have. Seeing none. I have a question. Okay. Commissioner Craig. I just have a question. I'm not from Vegas. Can you explain to me why we're doing the county as well as the city? Is this a normal process or is this something different? I'm just confused. So half of our vehicles are uh, housed uh, in this area. Uh, 
what we consider the, uh, uh, well, let me, uh, the east side is Flamingo, and that's the county side, and then the west side is the city of Las Vegas. And it's uh, for, for logistical purposes, uh, we, we uh, wanted to split the fleet up uh, t to be serviced by those two entities on each side of the uh, uh, city. And also from a cost standpoint, it's much more advantageous for us to use those services versus uh, having hiring staff or going out to the commercial market and buying gas and doing oil changes and you know we put a lot have a lot of wear and tear on our vehicles and again our partners in the county and the city who already have those processes in place are more you know adept to help us work through situations and going outside so commissioner Craig what I'm gathering is we have two different agreements because of the um, location of our fleet vehicles are in each closest to each jurisdiction so the one on flamingo is in clark county the one on the west side is in the city of las vegas and just to get those vehicles maintained it's, they're in closer proximity with each jurisdiction does that make sense great answer i like that i appreciate it and then I think that also it's uh, prudent because we know how hard it is to get the workforce that we need right. to do the job. So if we can work collaboratively and not have to go hire uh, very tough um, jobs to fill, then that also is, alleviates pressure from us having to do and so. I, and I would also add if uh, the elected officials would uh, have conversations with their DAs, uh, because those interlocal agreements are in the DA's possession and they're reviewing those as we speak. Okay. Okay. One quick question, Johnny. Mm -hmm. I'm assuming our fuel price is the same at the city and the county. Yes, it is. Thank you. And we, I just want to get ours from Costco. <laughs> and I just want to ask my legal counsel just out of an abundance of caution because I sit on the Las Vegas City Council do I don't have to recuse myself from voting on this agenda item because it invi involves my governmental entity because you, are you because I'm a council member for the city of Vegas I don't have to recuse well, myself from person anywhere you gonna vote I'm it's sorry so you're just putting the you're not gonna vote anyway right are you I w I'm asking the question if it's appropriate for me to do so, since it is an intergovernmental agreement between this agency and the other one I sit on. I just don't know if there's a conflict of interest that I need to recuse myself from voting on. I don't know. I just want to. I think you're fine because it's not yeah. like selecting one over the other and you can't push the clock. No. Okay. Yeah. So that's why I defer yeah. to your advice. Yeah, you're, you don't have any personal interest in it. You just work for the Okay. Agency. Just yeah. want to be crystal clear. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Um, Steve Henderson just threw us under the bus. <laughs> oh. He's clearing us, Commissioner. Is there, all right, so any, I'll go ahead and entertain a motion at this time if there are no further comments. I have a first from Commissioner Shaw and a second from Vice Chair McCurdy. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. aye. Any aye. opposed? Okay, motion carries. Uh, we'll move on to agenda item nine, approval to renew fiscal year 2023 various contracts. And Mr. Shaw, you're the man of the hour. <laughs> so the, the, this is a list of uh, all of the service contracts uh, that we do on an annual basis. And it covers uh, all the services that the agency uh, requires uh, to uh, operate and stay in business. And uh, these services will uh, commence on October 1st. So if there's any questions, I'll entertain any questions. By the way, thank you for adding the expiration dates. Help, help no problem. Me. Thank, you. thank you. You're welcome. So I'll defer to those that are um, looped in via virtual or phone. Are there any questions from you all uh, regarding agenda item nine? Okay, I'm not hearing any. Are there any here present? Any questions? No. <coughs> okay. So I have a first from Commissioner Tixier Bloom to approve agenda item nine and a second by uh, Commissioner Shaw. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. Aye. Any opposed? 
Motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to agenda item 10 from our finance department, approval for resolution SNRHA-120, authorizing the executive director or the chief administrative officer to pay off the Wells Fargo Bank general obligation promissory notes, number 17335495105-34, number 17335495142 for an estimated amount of $572,067 and $530,178 respectively using non-federal developer fees. Mr. Heron. Uh, good morning, Commissioner. Good afternoon, Commissioners. Uh, Fred Heron, uh, Chief Administrative Officer. Uh, <clears throat> this is a, a loan that was uh, init instituted by the City of Las Vegas back in 2007, and initially it was to, to pay off some existing loans uh, that was created back in 2001 to cover some some debt, some some dues, some fees that we had owed the uh, HUD, as well as pay off some uh, some existing loan to refinance Phase Eight to Robert Gordon and in the expansion of the uh, Rulon Earl Mobile Home Park, which is uh, the new portion of the Rulon Earl Mobile Home Park. Um, the two outstanding loans uh, total $1.1 million, and, and by paying off those two loans, we can save the, the affordable housing program about $612,000 in, in principal interest over the next five years. Yeah. And we're just asking the board to authorize the executive director to pay off those, those loans uh, using non-developer fees. Just Commissioner Shaw. Two quick questions. Um, I, I couldn't see in here, are, is this calculation, is there any prepayment penalty attached to that? Well, it's not a, a prepayment penalty attached to the loan, but the next item refers to the interest rate swap agreement, which has uh, some a mark to mark payoff that, in order to, to okay. get out of that loan as well. All right, and then just so that I'm clear so our minutes are correct, I. Are we actually getting a discount so there's a principal savings, or is this just savings and interest? It's a savings and interest and principal. Well, well, we, we, we pay enough, so we won't, but well, you don't get to save any principal. We save the interest. Yeah, I just want to make sure our minutes are right. The interest, so the interest so principal it's interest savings, saving. and we're paying off the principal. Correct. So, so you'd be saving the interest portion, there, yes. There's no principal. Correct. There, so we ought to correct the. Okay, so the, min the minutes need to reflect that the... Well, it says that it's a savings of interest in principle. Well, you want to say the principle, we say the interest, the interest portion. The yeah, principle the interest, we the interest portion is a savings, Correct. but principle is a principle, and it's not going to change. So. Okay, so I do see what you're stating, Commissioner Shaw, that on our agenda it says principle and interest, so may the record... But that principle and interest portion that is a tribute to the $600,000, but if you just wanted to carve out the interest portion, it just, it'd be, it'd be diff the difference between the interest and the principal portion. We're not saving on the principal portion. Right. But the $600,000, what we'd be paying to the bank exactly. is included in that, in that portion. Okay. But, it is, but it is the interest so that we are saving. So the point is we're saving interest. We only save, you only but, save but it. we're not saving any principal. You only save it on but the interest portion. It's still a smart Correct. thing to do. So. Thank you. Is that, is that clear enough for a record in the minutes? Um, I'm going to defer to Commissioner Shaw. Do you want to um, change the minutes to reflect? Well, Do you I'm want to change, make a motion I'm to change saying, the minutes to yeah, uh, the agenda saying, to reflect on the agenda. what you think is accurate? I'm just saying in, in, the, in the backup that we have here, which would be part of the minutes, it says that there's savings on principal and interest. Mm -hmm. And the reality is it's just savings on, on interest. On interest. Okay. Okay, so we just need to make sure we clean that up on the agenda to then be reflected in the minutes. Correct. Okay, thank you, good catch. Any questions or comments from those joining virtually or on the phone? I just want to thank Commissioner Shaw because I was a little confused. No. And I'm hearing kudos to Mr. Shaw <laughs> for catching that from Commissioner Craig. And I don't see any further questions or comments from the board here, so I'll be willing to entertain a motion. I have a first from Commissioner Sagerbloom. I'll second. And a second by Commissioner Shaw to approve agenda item 10. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries unanimously. We'll move on to agenda item 11, approval for resolution SNRHA 121, authorizing the executive director or the chief administrative officer to terminate the Wells Fargo Bank interest rate swap agreements in the estimated amount of $24,000 and $91,200 respectively using non-federal non developer fees. Mr. Heron. Um, as part of the two loan, the Wells Fargo loans, uh, the Housing Authority of the City of Las Vegas had entered into an interest rate swap agreement with Wells Fargo. 
Uh, this agreement is basically to use to hedge against interest rate risk uh, during that time uh, of, uh, of the 2007. Um, back in back in around around February 2022, um, we entered into discussion with Wells Fargo to begin on uh, to terminate this mark to mark or the swap swap agreement. And at that time, it was about $296,000 uh, for both of the agreements. Uh, Mr. Parker and I decided to, to kind of reschedule based on the fluctuation of the market and the interest rate pending, interest rate hike pending from the federal government. Um, by delaying this, this termination agreement, we were able to save approximately $180,000 in interest costs. Uh, Mr. Parker also was successful in getting a discount from Wells Fargo in the amount of $7,000, which doesn't seem a lot, but it's, it actually decreased the mark to mark total to the $115,000. Um, but paying off the swap agreement, we would save probably about $187,000 over the next four years, four and a half years um, by terminating this agreement. So, so we've already terminated this agreement? We haven't terminated yet. We were ter once, once the board approve it and we pay off the loan, we will pay off this agreement. We will terminate this as well. Do it tomorrow because rates are going yeah. up again. So, okay. so the, and, swap, and it, and it the swap will cost on, us more money. Based on the so. library rate, and it does fluctuate. That's why I had estimated yeah, the amount. Quick, so. The quicker we can do it, the better off we are. Thanks. So. Okay. so hearing the sense of urgency, are there any questions <laughs> from uh, virtual or telephone commissioners? No. Okay. No. Seeing none, I'll entertain I a motion. Uh, was that you, Commissioner Craig? Yes. I'm just curious. I mean, this is a happy day. Uh, I just where those funds are going to be. Uh, have you contemplated that? Because I mean, I'm just so happy. I just like to know where they're going to be, going to be going. So where, where's the interest where, savings? Where's, where's the money going to be? Placed? Where the funds, uh, the funds aren't going anywhere. The funds are going to, once we pay it off, we would save them. Instead of paying Wells Fargo, we would keep those money that we would generally pay off for the next five years to, to, for the loan. And they become general funds to run the organization and the different programs. Yeah, well, question. the savings would be Thank part of the affordable housing exactly. program. If, that was. if, if the question is, we have excess funds available to us. Yes. And we're using those, those we're excess using. funds to pay this loan off because we're paying six and three quarter percent interest. Right. And it saves us all that interest by paying right. those loans off now. So then it's accurate to state, just like our ED just stated, that goes to our general fund, all the... No, these, these, these the, the, fund we, the funds we we're currently using are coming out, out of our developer fee, our non-federal money, but it will save our affordable housing program because the affordable housing program is the program that pays the, 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 the note to Wells Fargo. So now that for the next five years, we, would, we wouldn't be paying any principal interest to the uh, Wells Fargo loan. And the point I was making that they're, they're not restricted funds. These unrestricted right. funds. Right, they're not use. federal funds that we have to put in various programs. So it's a good thing to have those additional dollars so it to gives help us, us more flexibility to make sure we can bolster whatever Absolutely. area we need to with right. future and support. It not, only, it not only saves us the interest by canceling the swap, as, as interest rates climb, in this case, because we got a fairly decent deal at the time, that swap will start to cost us more money. So it's going to cost us more money. And, yeah, and so we want to get rid of that swap as soon as we can. Uh, so it doesn't add more expense to to the interest. Okay. So. Does that answer your question, Commissioner Craig? Thank you so much. It does answer mine. I appreciate it very much. Okay, thank you. Hearing no questions or comments, I'll entertain a motion. I have a first from Commissioner Dismond. I'll second. A second from Commissioner Shaw. All those in favor, please signify by stating aye. 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 All right. The motion carries unanimously. And um, that is all we have in terms of agenda items for discussion and possible action. And um, just to get you caught up to speed, Commissioner Vice Chair McCurdy, um, how do you vote on, was it 10 and 11? Okay. So may the record reflect that uh, Vice Chair McCurdy is also an eye on both those items. So we'll move on to agenda item number 12, receive the report from our executive director on administrative and operational activities of the agency. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, had an active month. The uh, Marble Manor CNI process, uh, we're, again, we're still in the midst of the community process and it's really, really going well. Um, partnering with the city and the, uh, the resident council we had our second series of communication meetings 
since our, our last board meeting. Um, what was um, uniquely different about this one was the, the presentation of the various uh, visions that people have for the community. And uh, the, team, um, the team did a really good job of getting people out and really hearing what, what does a revitalized community look like from the eyes of the people who live in the community. Um, we have a, another community event coming up, I like to say the week of, of November 14th. And between now and then, we're really going to um, work to pull together a community event to just highlight some of the things that we'll talk about on the 14th. Um, the team has different ideas of, of a combination of fun and informative um, um, processes or events we can use to get people out. So we're really excited about the direction we going, we're going. I wanted to uh, thank the county and obviously Vice Chair McCurdy and Commissioner Sigerbloom for their support and the Housing Authority receiving uh, $7.8 million from the county to do revitalization and new construction. Um, new construction for Bennett 2 um, development and then uh, revitalization for, for the James Down um, uh, senior apartment. So um, going in the right direction, we're still waiting to hear from the Home Means Nevada uh, process from the governor. Uh, we've submitted 20 applications, 21 applications, and we're waiting to hear back from that now. Um, last week had the pleasure of hosting um, um, U.S. Congressman David Price from North Carolina and our own Dina Titus from here in Nevada. Um, Congressman Price is the chair of the, um, the very powerful transportation HUD, an industry, we call it the T-HUD committee. And T-HUD is the committee that um, determines how much money, thus the term HUD, how much monies we get to to run our program. Uh, uh, the congressman came out and we met at uh, Vera Johnson B, which is a, uh, a redeveloped development where we partner with Nevada Hand. And then they also did a, uh, a tour of, um, of Marble Manor. Uh, the congressman is a real big fan of RAD. We were very, uh, very pleased to tell him that we had completed eight RADs over the you know, the course of the program being out. We had one of our residents, um, Tamika Tatum, who's a graduate of our family self-sufficiency program. She came and she gave testimony as to how she used the program to, to better herself. And uh, so really, really good opportunity to uh, show off what we're doing and I want you all to know that I didn't let a moment go by without making that appeal, that we need more federal aid, we need more vouchers. And so very, very good afternoon. You know, I wanted to take this opportunity to acknowledge uh, Adrian Babbitt. Adrian is our director of um, our Las Vegas field office director from HOT. And I don't know if you'd like to say anything or not, Adrian, but just wanted to um, we, you know, obviously we report on an operational standpoint to the San Francisco office, but Adrian is here locally. Um, um, she helped to actually coordinate it with us, the, uh, the congressman's visit. And so uh, we're developing a very, very strong relationship and partnership in working together to uh, serve our community. And thank you for your support, Ms. Babbitt. And I think that does conclude, conclude my report. But before my portion of the report, the next portion of the report, thank you, Paula, is uh, we have our two service uh, organizations that are in today. Paula's going to introduce yeah. herself and tell us a little bit about each organization. Good afternoon. Um, my name is Paula Tucker, and I'm the Acting Resident Program Coordinator and uh, Family Self-Sufficiency Coordinator for the Southern Nevada Regional Housing Authority. And today I have the pleasure of introducing to you two of our community partners and members of our program coordinating committee. First, we have uh, Mr. Dante Wilson. 
come up, Dante. He is the manager of career services and veteran integration program at Goodwill of Southern Nevada. Uh, Goodwill provides essential services to assist our residents at crucial times of preparing to enter the workforce, becoming job ready, and continue to support during employment. So, Dante. Thank you for that introduction, Ms. Tucker, and welcome, Mr. Wilson. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, again, my name is Dante Wilson. I'm the Career Center Manager for Goodwill Career Centers, um, as well as the Veteran Integration Program Manager um, for Goodwill. Uh, Goodwill offers, uh, has two career centers here in the Valley, uh, one located on Rainbow and Alta, and the other uh, in the Boulevard Mall. Um, those services that we provide in the career centers has everything to do with employment and upward mobility. Um, we uh, make sure that every um, participant is what we call um, our clients, if you will, but we make sure that every participant that walks into the Career Center um, walks out with something that they can use to, to make sure that they're growing um, in their career field or in a career field that they are looking to get into. Um, we offer things like resume assistance, um, interviewing skills. We do um, workshops on uh, soft skills and leadership development, um, as well as uh, emotional intelligence. And so making sure that um, everyone who wants the dignity of work can make sure that they have that opportunity. Um, and our veteran integration program um, is housed out of the Rainbow Career Center. And we make sure that veterans, you know, those who served us first, are able to uh, become priority for us and make sure that they are um, able to translate those skills that they utilized in the military into the civilian workforce. Um, and so we make sure that um, they are well equipped to go and um, interview, interview for jobs or if they want to enter into a training. Um, we offer all sorts of partnerships with training, um, anything from CDL to HVAC to IT, um, anything in the nursing field as well. And so we make sure that Again, anyone who wants to enter into those sustainable wage jobs and into those fields that are growing here in Southern Nevada, we make sure that we place them um, in those. We have most recently launched um, our Train to Hire programs. Uh, these programs are programs that we've directly partnered with employers um, in the Valley. Uh, we went to those employers and say, okay, um, what specific training, what kind of curriculum do we need to present to our participants that will say if they come to Valley Health Systems or Intermountain Health Systems um, and you, you'll say because you have taken this training, we'll give you a job. And so we have what's called a 90-day MA training um, where you are becoming a, a medical assistant in 90 days. So after that 90-day classroom training, those participants are being paid as medical assistants working in the Valley Health Systems where they're completing their additional year of um, of training, of hands-on training, but they're already being paid as medical assistants after 90 days. We also have a CNA training sprint um, with Valley Health Systems as well. And then lastly, we have a pre-stage hand training program. Um, it's an audio, vid audio video tech program, uh, making sure that you know anyone who wants to get into those hands-on fields, uh, building stages and set setting up for concerts and things like that. So we have that stage hand program as well, where someone can get into that uh, wage. And those wages are about $22 um, an hour after about a two-week training. Um, and so. Uh, Goodwill is definitely uh, making strides in the community and making sure we're placing people into employment um, fast or placing people into trainings fast. So if you have any of your clients, participants, um, you can send them to either of the Goodwills um, or you can email me a referral and we'll make sure we get them situated. Thank you. Before you go, Mr. Wilson, I know that um, Commissioner Black, and Black, Vice Chair McCurdy and myself, we sit on workforce connections. So this, uh, you know, we love any time we hear about workforce preparation and um, how we're trying to meet the challenges of our workforce, especially in the health care area. Absolutely. So when you mentioned that, I just want to know how do most people encounter your resources and the support you offer? I, I just kind of want to get an idea. How does somebody come across Goodwill as 
a connector to a, and placement into one of the programs that you've mentioned, like HVAC, CDL licenses? Absolutely. It, it has a lot to do with our marketing. Of course, Goodwill is known for their fantastic retail operations, right? And so in all of our retail stores, we have advertisements about the career centers and the services that we offer. But as well, um, Goodwill used to be a recipient of some of those workforce connections. We owe a dollars, and so that kind of buzz is still out there. People still come to the career centers thinking that we still have that funding. Funding, um, Goodwill <clears throat> is a little more unrestricted now because our retail operations fund our mission services. And so, if you ever shop at a Goodwill and they ask you at the register, "Do you want to round up those round up dollars?" Uh, fund our programs for mission services. So it's a lot, of, lot to do with marketing and uh, we've had a lot of uh, media attention with these 90-day uh, MA and CNA Sprint uh, healthcare programs as well. Do you have a comment or a question, Vice Chair? Yes, no, thank you for the presentation. Um, my, I guess, thoughts are around uh, the numbers of folks that you're getting to and through your program about how many um, you know, residents are we reaching uh, and getting to a place of self-sufficiency, which you say an maybe annually through this program? Annually through our uh, medical assistant program, we, um, every 90 days is about 40 people. Um, and we filled up, class. I think we're now looking at like our February cohort, so all of our classes have been filled up um, since we began in January. Um, for our uh, certified nursing assistant program, it's about 30 people, and we run that one every single month, and all of those classes have been filled as well. And so uh, the attention for um, participants to enter into the medical field has been very, very high. Okay. Absolutely. And do they have to income qualify to then um, have the support and the, a lot of the training paid for? Absolutely. Um, and I, uh, we are now, I think um, our income guidelines are 250% above poverty uh, guideline. Yes. Okay. And so more, way more flexible than we owe up. Yes, a lot more uh, flexible. <laughs> and then I wanted to know, do, do you have ages that you are catering to and supporting, or is it the sky's the limit from the time you can work to the time you want to retire? Great question. Uh, right now we're looking at 18 and over uh, with a high school diploma. All right. I think I've asked enough questions. Any questions or comments from the rest of the board? I have a question. This is Commissioner Craig. Uh, I was very excited to know that you, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I was very excited to know that you're going to have MAs as well as CNAs. Now, my question is with the MAs, uh, so they will receive certification that they are MAs after a certain time period? Yes, ma'am, from um, Valley Health Systems. All right, and my next question is being a, a former nurse, uh, this is probably going with a uh, Commissioner McCurdy calls going in the weeds, but I'm talking about the back. Now, my question is, how many uh, patients uh, will they have if they get out of training? Uh, I hear reality numbers versus the way they say things are. Will they be overworked? Uh, will there be shortages? Uh, what kinds of uh, income, you know, what kind of, what kind of health insurance would they have once they go through training? Those factors that I think most people that get in the health field would like to know. I'm not sure on all of those uh, on all of those details. I do know um, that the 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 two main um, health systems that we work with here in Southern Nevada are Valley Health Sy Systems and Intermountain Health Systems. And so far, we've heard really great reviews on uh, benefits and wages. Uh, so I, I want to say that they're well taken care of, but um, um, a lot of those facts I don't know. And then Question I, I'm excited about. You said that you're going to be having stage hands. You're going to be having. So my question is stage hands. Just what kinds of things with the stage hand individuals? Because I will probably you know like to get that information out. Are they going to be working on the stage? Are they going to be building the stage? Or just what are they specifically going to be doing? Absolutely. Um, a lot of times they're building the stage and setting up the audio and video technology around the concerts and the shows. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. We appreciate your um, flexibility in answering the questions we pose to you. Absolutely. Thank you, Chair Portion. Thank you.
Okay, our next partner is uh, Jennifer Pimento. She's the branch manager of Nevada for the Cupcake Girls. Um, her agency plays a vital role in our community, and I can uh, say personally, I've referred clients um, that have received life-saving services. So with no uh, further ado, I'll bring up Jennifer. Welcome, Ms. Pimentel. I'm a little short, so I gotta put this down. Um, thank you, board, uh, Mr. Jordan, as well as Paula for inviting us here. Um, as Paula mentioned, my name is Jennifer Pimentel. I'm the Nevada branch manager for the Cupcake Girls. We are an organization located here in Las Vegas, as well as Portland, working in the prevention and aftercare of domestic sex trafficking, as well as providing advocacy to people in the adult industry. Um, I have a presentation. I'm gonna kind of flip through these slides and keep it really short, because I do want to update you on the numbers that we have going on within the organization. So just a little bit about me, um, this little girl standing here at the podium in front of you. I am a sex worker, originally from New Jersey. What brought me to Las Vegas is that one of my closest friends was being trafficked while I was dancing at the club. I tried finding resources for her at nonprofits. Everyone just wanted to put her in a shelter, but I knew that wasn't the choice that she wanted to make. Um, there was no other options to support people aside from just completely changing their lives within 24 hours, putting them in a shelter that they're not comfortable living in. Um, so what I did with my friend is we actually opened a bank account on her behalf, and every night before her abuser came to pick her up, she would give me some money to deposit on her behalf. Um, after two months, he found out, he physically threatened me, and I had to leave the state. Um, I came here to open my own nonprofit to support sex workers and sex trafficking survivors, but luckily within two months of living here, I found out about the Cupcake Girls, signed up as a volunteer, and later on transitioned onto staff. So why are we called the Cupcake Girls? We go into strip clubs and brothels with cupcakes just as an icebreaker. Um, something really cool to note as well is that if there is an abuser in the club or the brothel, if they ask them why they were talking to us, we were just posing with cupcakes, just regular degular day going on at the club. Um, these cupcakes really open the conversation for folks and really let them know that, hey, we're here with no agenda. We offer non-judgmental support to anyone formerly or currently in a trafficking situation or in the industry. Um, we have them at fundraisers, events, and clubs. Surely it's a representation of who we are. And as I mentioned, just to go into a little bit more detail of who we serve, they can be former or currently in the adult industry as well as a sex trafficking survivor. We do work with folks that are 18 and over. If someone is a minor, we partner with tons of organizations here that can help them out as well. And while we're called the Cupcake Girls, we don't just work with women, we work with all gender expressions. A sex worker is, in case you don't know what a sex worker is, someone independently working in the adult industry with control, complete control of every single thing that they do. So their wages, how they work, their schedule, literally every choice that's made, the final choice is made by them. So consent is really what I want y'all to take out of this. We believe at the organization that sex work is work. You might love your job, you might hate your job, you might do this job for six months because you're trying to find something better. And the same applies for people that are in the adult industry consensually. When it comes to sex trafficking, this is someone in the adult industry, maybe they started out on their own and later became trafficked, or maybe they just started in the adult industry being trafficked. Regardless, they're doing this not out of choice. And the very first bullet point about intimidation and threats, these are the things that you can pick up on the day to day, what kind of really calls out to you. The physical abuse, rape, threat with weapons, anger, or even threatening your loved ones. But those two bullet points at the very bottom, control and isolation, psychological manipulation, this is what Hollywood does not wanna show you in the movies when they talk about domestic sex trafficking. You might say, well, why didn't they leave earlier? Because they're kept close to their abuser. They're dependent on their abuser. They might have control of all their money. Or it might be a full cycle where they're facing abuse and then they're apologizing. It just keeps going over and over and over again. And it's really hard to get trapped in that and really look from outside the box. What we do with our clients is that we're not a rescue organization. So if someone says, I'm being trafficked, I don't know what to do, the very last thing we say is, I know what you need. You need X, Y, and Z, or I went through something similar, this is what I did, it would work for you. 
Um, we truly understand our clients are individuals. They um, come with their own stories. They come with their own paths. And what we do at the organization is never impose our own judgments or suggest things that they need to do. We work on an empowerment model. And what I mean by that is when the client comes through our door, we ask what they want to do. It doesn't matter if the red flags are popping out to us and we say internally, this person is definitely being sex trafficked. We still won't take action until the client tells us what action they want to take. And similar, if someone is in the adult industry, if they're thriving, that's awesome. If they want to exit, we have tons of connections that we can pair them up with so they can transition safely. Because again, as a sex worker, um, financially transitioning from the adult industry into a regular job is something that a lot of people, it might be holding them back from making that exit. This is just a series of confidentiality of what we do with our clients. I won't read this word for word, um, but in Las Vegas, as someone who's brand new to this city, I learned very quickly, it's a big city, small world. <laughs> so when it comes to our clients, it doesn't matter if the client wants to talk about their situation in public, we just won't. And similarly with our advocates, when we're talking about clients, we don't say identifying information, even if you think you're omitting the most details, again, it's a much smaller world than you think, someone can immediately out that person and we don't wanna put our clients in danger. These next few slides are gonna go into what our programs are. So we have three programs currently at the Cupcake Girls, referrals, advocacy, and mentorship. Like I mentioned, we work on an empowerment model, so clients don't have to go step by step to go into a program. They tell us which program they wanna jump into, and if we have capacity, we'll take them in. Um, the first program is referrals. So this is probably the quickest one out of all three. This is for a client that knows what they're looking for. Maybe they need a new tire for their car. They need a daycare center that won't call CPS on them because of their profession. Or maybe they need a dentist because the last time they went to a dentist appointment, they said what they do for work and they were abused. Um, so with our referral program, we pair them up with those resources. It takes about one to two weeks for it to really finalize. Um, I'm happy to share these slides with you all as well after the presentation. I know the text is really small. Our advocacy program, is meant for clients that really want to work one-on-one -on -one and achieve certain goals. It might look like I was just released from jail. I want to get custody of my children. That's a one-sentence ask about a 10-page step-by-step for how to do that. Um, and a lot of times when you are released from jail, you don't know where to start. So with our advocacy program, we can take that one prompt, get custody of my children, and really lay it out with our clients. It might look like getting you a job with a W-2, finding new housing, food stamps, Medicaid, a doctor for your children so you can have a primary care provider. And we have all of those resources within our partnerships that we vet and make sure are safe spaces for our clients. So when they're going to family court, we have family court lawyers that we know won't judge them for what they do. And similarly with our advocacy program, it might not be something um, of emergency, such as getting custody of your children. It could also be things like, I wanna own my own business or I wanna go back to school, but I'm working full time and I have kids. It's hard for me to find flexible studying. With our mentorship program, this is for folks that really just want that sense of community. Um, so they don't want you to pair them up with resources. They don't have a specific goal that they're looking to strive for, but they know that we're a safe space within the organization and they just wanna to talk to us every now and then. So with our mentorship program, we check in on clients once or twice a month, just making sure everything is okay. If they do need something, let's put you in the referral program. If they have a question and it's a multi-step, let's put you back into advocacy and hit that goal. Um, overall, with our mentorship, folks can also join our support groups that meet once a month, and they actually sit together with clients and a facilitator just talking through the day to day. Some call to actions um, that we have is the peer-to-peer -peer fundraiser that we have coming up actually next Friday. It's called Change Stakes Action. And there's multiple ways for folks to get involved, not just the board, but all you beautiful people standing behind me as well. Um, with Change Stakes Action, it's peer-to-peer, -peer, so I can do this, my staff can do this, and you can do this as well. Um, we rally up all of our friends and family as an organization to raise $300,000 to create real sustainable change for our clients. The fundraiser runs from September 23rd to October 14th. If you don't have capacity to fundraise with us, that's completely okay. We also have opportunities for sponsorships 
Or if you would like, you can just be a donor throughout the fundraiser as well. We have matching days that are really um, encouraging for donors. So if you do a donation on one of those days, they can be doubled as well. I don't have um, the next information up here on the slides, but I do just want to tell you what we've been up to in 2022. Um, we've had 8,709 client contacts. So whether that's emails, calls in person, video meetings. We've had $49,136 distributed in direct financial aid. So whether that's helping someone pay a bill, pay their rent, or even just pay for their daycare for their children. When it comes to housing resources, we've had 70 referrals just since January, um, as well as 72 connections to lawyers, whether that's legal, civil, or family. When it comes to mental health resources, which is one of our top requests with clients, we've had 383 referrals. Something to note as well currently, we're a very small organization and our current client list is only 22 with seven people on the wait list. So if you know anyone with a social work background, a psychology background, or someone that doesn't have those backgrounds but wants to learn on how to be a trauma-informed provider, we would love for them to check out our website, contact me directly so that we can have more capacity for our clients. As a branch manager, my role here is just to be involved with the community. So if you hear about the Cupcake Girls, if our name kind of brings up a little moment in your head, please email me. Um, there is always a way for you to get involved. If you have a busy schedule, I have a busy schedule as well. I have things that you can just knock out in five minutes, even if it's just spreading the word. Um, so I would love to open this up for questions. Questions from the board? Where, Commissioner Shaw? Where does most of your funding come from? Sure, um, I actually go to that slide. Um, so most of our funding actually comes from what we call the Cupcake Collective, which is our monthly donor program. Um, so if you look at the screen, donors actually can pair up the donation with what service is provided to our clients. For the Nevada branch specifically, 70% of our income comes from this campaign. Thank you. Any other questions? To know, uh, maybe I can ask Angela from our Section 8 program, the, the abuse and part of this process she talked about, could that possibly make uh, some of the victims uh, available for the VAWA vouchers? Please I'm come sorry. to the microphone I'm and sorry, say your Angela, name for the up. record. Yeah. I just see a potential connection. Taller, so. Hi, I'm Angela Yenchek. I'm the acting um, deputy director for housing programs. We don't have a set aside amount of uh, vouchers for VAWA or um, domestic violence, but we do offer those with any of the vouchers. So if the, okay. if the person comes in with that um, request, yes, we do offer that move or whatever situation they need to use the voucher for that. So Thank it you. goes with the regular voucher. So I, I like for us to maybe connect the two of you all together so that we as an organization become more familiar with the work that you're doing. Vice Chair McCurdy. Um, number one, I just want to say thank you for your activism, uh, you. the work that you do. Uh, we were, you know, uh, happy to contribute $500 to your organization just a short time ago. Uh, and I just want to say, if you, you know, any of you who are in attendance or who are listening, uh, please make sure that, you know, you do your part where there's five bucks or 5,000 or 50,000, mm -hmm. you know, don't limit yourself. Uh, make sure that you are contributing to this organization who does phenomenal work. Thank you. Thank you. I do want to know a lot of our monthly donors give five to $10 a month. So if you can spare one coffee at Starbucks mm -hmm. once a month, we would greatly appreciate that. Um, and Mr. Jordan, just to go off of your question again, we do partner with a lot of domestic violence-based organizations. Um, I know specifically we have a great relationship with folks such as the Shade Tree. Um, so if folks are looking for those vouchers and they identify as a survivor of domestic violence, they can ask us, or when we pair them up with the Shade Tree, they can bring that up as well. Very good, thank you. Thank you very much, um, Ms. Pimentel, for that uh, very informative presentation. Thank you. 
You know, Madam I Chair. I see um, uh, Executive Director Jordan wants to make some final remarks. Just final remarks. You know, I'll, I'll tell you, both presentations uh, were, were very humbling today. It really speaks to, I like to say, why we do what we do. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that, you know, somewhere along the line we decided that we would continue to bring, you know, organizations in. Uh, one of the things that I, I want us to focus on moving forward is is having a um, a variation of these presentations that we can do at the property level. You know, having you know showing up at resident council meetings, uh, showing up at coffees and the various. We have a we have a number of activities that go on at our properties. So Lee and Paula, we're going to work to see how we can get some of this good news out in the community, particularly with our residents. And then finally, I just wanted to say if, you're, if your calendars permit, uh, this afternoon, Councilman Brian Knutson and I are going to do uh, bingo over at uh, James Down Towers. And uh, I'm sure that if you can, it's at 2 o'clock. We can always use some guest bingo callers. and. Uh, that concludes my report. So thank you all very much. Thank you. All right. With that, I uh, will adjourn this meeting. Thank you, everyone. And before. Yeah, Madam, Madam Chair, oh, I did have a. I need to move and get. Oh, public comment. So sorry. I'm moving ahead. Hold on. So let me take Commissioner Sagerbloom before we take public comment. Your comments. Thank you. I wanted to uh, announce that we're, my office is sponsoring the Home Ownership Resource Fair a week from Saturday and thank Mr. Jordan and the staff here for pushing that out in the community and, and I think some of your people are going to come to our to the resource fair but that's at Winchester uh, Community Center Saturday uh, the 24th at 10 a.m. and I also wanted to acknowledge that Commissioner Black has a birthday coming up uh, tomorrow so happy birthday to Commissioner Black okay Commissioner Craig I hear you have a comment too I just, want to, I just want to thank uh, for that last comment that you say you're going to be doing. Uh, you, as an executive, are going to be involved in the bingo at JJT, which is the place to be. I just I thank you for your concern also about the ladies who are involved in certain situations. I appreciate the compassion. Well, thank you, Commissioner Craig. So I'll open it up to the last period of public comment. Under this public comment, um, we just want you to state your name for the record and keep your comments to three minutes. And we can't um, speak to what you're speaking because it hasn't been agendized. So we can just listen to what you bring to the board, but not offer a response. So is there anyone wanting to offer public comment? All right, seeing none, I may now adjourn the meeting of the Housing Authority. Have a great day.